Hello, everybody. Oh, it's so good to see you here. Hello, everybody. So, today I know I'm running um, behind on making you a my version of Favorite Childhood Memory Quilt. But I have a little problem I hope you'll understand. And see what's behind me? That's not an art quilt, <laughs> nor is it a landscape. But I have a grandson who is scheduled to be born in four days. Because of this nasty COVID crisis, I can't go up there when he's born. But I'm going to try very hard to get this quilt finished and in the mail so that by the time they're home and settled, they'll have this blanket. So, you know, my life has been a little stressful and out of sorts with me having to travel last week. And I'm just doing the best I can. <laughs> and you know what? Sometimes that's the best we can do. So let's see who is here today. Polly, yay, Marsha, so good to see you. How's the new machine, sewing machine going, Marsha? I hope your sewing machine is, is working out good for you. Read the manual and learn how to use all the buttons and knobs, the bells and the whistles. That's the best advice I can give you. And Polly, it's so, oh, the lake in your backyard. Yeah, luckily, Mark was telling me that we are having a warning for flash flooding, but hopefully, I think we're on a high enough hill, we don't have to worry. But in case, if I start gurgling, or you see little bubbles, it, I'll have to go. <laughs> but anyway, so, oh, yeah, your son's in Virginia. Yeah, they had, they had a rough time the other day when Hurricane Isai, Isaias, Isai, I, I'll stop right there. I thought this time for sure I'd get it right, but um, that when this when that hurricane went through, it did. It, there were like 16, 13 or sixteen tornadoes that followed the east coast right up, and and one of the places that got the hurricane was Suffolk, Virginia, and. I have family from that area. They're, that's not an area where they normally get a lot of tornadoes, you know, or hurricane damage. But anyway, trying to get my camera just where I want it so I can feel like I'm talking to you. So um, let's see. So we got, oh, Diane57 is here. It's so good seeing y'all. Cheryl, you sweetheart. You know what? It had to be wonderful to be able to get away to a retreat. I tell you, that would be heaven. Oh, it would. I normally put on a retreat in November, but the way things are going, when people have asked me, I said, well, I'm not ready to make the drop down dead decision. But if I had to guess, we won't be doing it. I, I just can't take the chance. But I'm going to give the group. Some of the ladies are braver than I am or don't have the health problems I do. So I'm going to give somebody else a chance. If you want to, you know, carry it on, I'll, I'll give you all the stuff you need and you can keep doing it. Otherwise, I'll wait till next year. But anyway... Uh, hi, Miss Diana Wright. Michelle F., hello. I don't know if we know Michelle F., but it is really good to see you. So, Teresa Jukovic is here. Woohoo! Diana Wright, who has a gorgeous new swimming pool just begging to be played in. Oh, my gosh. I love it. And, you know, my favorite way to swim is buck naked. So... If you're not afraid of scaring cows, go for it, darling. Just go for it. <laughs> but, well, nice to see you, Michelle. We have a Michelle with one L. Now we have a Michelle with two L's. I love it. So, oh, isn't that nice? Isn't that nice to be able to share time with other women, other quilters who understand the language, understand the crazy love, and preoccupation with this hobby and that is just wonderful so 
Hello, Deborah Donnell. You're at the lake house, Pushaw Lake. Oh, that sounds nice. Oh, I'm so happy for you. We're supposed to go camping later in September, but uh, I'll just ha I'll see how things are going. <laughs> I'm such a big chicken, but you know, I went to the doctor yesterday, and a lot of positive things and a couple things I really need to work on more. But I told myself before I went to the doctor, I said, Deb, you've had a lot of stress on you. I mean, lot, lot of stress. And Dora's here. Hello, Dora. And is your last name pronounced Seal? And, um, but I've had a lot of stress on me. And especially with last week having to travel up to Maryland, where I didn't want to travel to be exposed to more, you know, higher chance of getting this coronavirus. And just what the reason for traveling was. So I've been under a lot of stress, and I told myself, plus, when we were traveling, you can't go to a restaurant. Oh, I was going to tell, I'll tell you about my polished color. <laughs> Thanks for noticing. Um, I had to find something turquoisey so I could tie it in, right? But anyway, I said, we had to eat carry out, take out. Well, you can't get the healthiest choices from take out, especially along the road and in you know, towns that you haven't been to in 14, 15 years. So my triglycerides are a little too high. And uh, that's always something, unfortunately, I have to deal with. And my A1C, which is my extended blood sugar reading, was just two tenths higher than I'd like it. And But I can, I can get that back into shape, no problem. And I knew that might be up because I don't know if y'all are aware, but when you're under a lot of stress, you're, it throws off your numbers. And unfortunately, it can mess up your diabetes control. So, I, you know, I warned her, but luckily I had lost a couple pounds, several, and I'm going to lose a lot more. I'm going to keep walking and exercising. She's the most wonderful doctor, and I really, it's time. It's time to do it. So I'll use my elliptical trainer when it's too hot to go out, and when I can go outside, then I'll take a walk around the neighborhood. Stress is a killer. It truly, truly is a killer. So anyway, we were so we were so good when we did travel to Mark got a thing of hand sanitizer and put like a half a thing of 70% alcohol in it. So it was nice and wet to wipe your hands with. And we, we still love that thing. We said, if we travel, at, you know, anymore, but just uh, if he goes to pick up pizza, he, he takes it with him. So we love that. And the mask, you know, but I had to wear it. Hi, Kathy Klein is here too. Yay, Kathy. Kathy of the beautiful chair sitting in her room. She just looks lovely. She just is elegant and looked lovely. And I saw June, I believe, Lynn, the Lime Zombie. It is so good to see you. I've got to tell you this, Lime. Lyme zombie is because she got, she got Lyme disease and it has changed her life. And we need to be careful and check yourself really good for ticks. I keep an old pair of my Skechers shoes by the back door that I can slip on my feet to go let out the chickens, to go run, put them away, whatever I have to just run and do. And I use them like slip-ons. And so Mark slipped him on today to go let the chickens out. And he came back in and he was sitting on the couch and on his white sock, he noticed a brown dot. And so he kind of like flicked at it and he noticed it moved. And he came down to show me. And guess what? It was a tick. So he made sure to flush it totally away. Luckily, it was just on the sock. It, it must have, going outside and walking in the leaves and stuff, it must have come onto the shoe and then climbed into the shoe while the shoes were sitting there. Luckily, we don't have a big problem with ticks because we have chickens who free range scavenge every afternoon. And, uh, but... Oh, it, that worries me to see that because with Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever and Lyme disease, and there may even be a new one. So everyone, 
Take good care of yourself when it comes to ticks. Anything, if you feel itchy or something, check it good. And be careful how you take those off so you don't squirt any of the inside of the tick back into your body. Do it with tweezers and try to get near the, the head and gently pull so that the head doesn't come off. So anyway, but yeah, if you have, if you have diabetes, you know that stress plays with you. And, you know, I was being very brave and trying to reframe it. But, oh, my face broke out. I was just a mess. So, you know, you can try all you want to tell yourself things, but your body's like, hmm. But uh, I found out I've got to go on vitamin B12. Mine's a little low. She said the metformin that I take for my diabetes can prevent absorption of B12. So I'm going to go on B12. That's easy. Yeah, I told Mark we, that my parents used to burn them with the cigarette, especially if they're stuck in you. You want to do something to try to get them to back out. But sometimes I put alcohol. But I said, just make sure you flush it and see it go down that drain. <laughs> but anyway, but otherwise, most all of my blood levels. And, you know, I had two neck surgeries. So she did a comprehensive blood work to see how my parent, the two parathyroids that I have left out of the four I used to have. She wanted to see how they were doing. If they had were starting, because what happens with these little tiny parathyroids is they start growing. They multiply. It's like a tumor, but it's benign. But it's not really benign because it, that that tissue itself makes this PTH, this hormone, and the bigger they get, the more hormone that it releases. The problem with that, it can drain your body of calcium. So the calcium in your blood seems really high because it's constantly pulling it out of your teeth and your bones. And I went from having really good um, bone density to osteo Pina, which is that step before you get osteoporosis. So she's going to this coming up year. 2021, I get another bone density. And I've been working hard to try to build back my bone density, carrying heavy things, lifting things, doing weight resistant activities. And believe it or not, being overweight kind of can be self-protective for your bones because you're carrying more weight. But I'd rather do it by exercising. <laughs> so anyway. Ah, gotcha. Okay. I don't want any shot. <laughs> Let me tell you, I did get it. I, I got my blood drawn yesterday. I'm, I am so good with that. Now, I even watched her. I was a little dehydrated. I forgot to drink enough before I went into the doctor. And so she had to use one of the little butterfly needles in my arm. But I'm so good at having blood drawn now that I watched the blood go through that little tube into the vials. Is that the coolest thing? Because I used to, like, pass out when I had to have blood drawn. So then she said, well, the doctor wants you to have a pneumonia shot. And I said, well, I had the Prevnar 13. She said, she needs you to take another one. It's been three years since I took it. So I said, okay. And what she's doing is she's trying to make sure that her patients are fully immunized, have every opportunity to be able to fight this COVID if they were to get it. Since I've already had double pneumonia and bronchitis numerous times, and I have asthma, I am vulnerable. So they gave me the shot. The shot didn't hurt at all. She said, but your arm, your arm is going to get sore. I just thought I'd tell you. And it did. <laughs> and I felt like a big baby. I wanted to come home and protect my arm. Today I had to put my bra on. And it was like, that hurts. <laughs> but you know, it's already getting better. So it, it, it hurt the most about 12 hours after the shot. But I keep telling myself it hurts a lot less than getting pneumonia. So that's the important thing. Oh, my goodness, Diana. I bet you did. And then she wants us to go to CVS soon and get our flu shot. So maybe in about a week or two, I'll go get my flu shot. And that way, I told her I'm trying to eat better. I'm exercising. 
I've got, I'm trying to, I told her when I read this magazine, it said, talking about COVID, it said, if you've ever wanted to lose weight, now's the time. So um, I even, I, I've got on taped on the upstairs TV, a stretching exercise class that comes on public television. And I'm going to try to exercise to that. So please do me a favor. Take good care of all of you. Ah, take good care of all of you, make sure you take your medicines just as you're instructed. Eat well, sleep well, exercise if you possibly can. I want all of you to stay healthy. So hang in there, guys. We can do this. Oh, but, okay. So you have to be, what, 62 to get a shingle shot? The year, When I was 59, guess who got shingles? Oh, was it terrible and uh, if I could find oh I mean I looked like Godzilla I got it um, this eye I got it from the eyelid on up into the hairline luckily it did not bother my cornea I had to go to a specialist to see but let me see if I can find um, um, an immunization for shingles but she said getting it is about the best I mean, I'm, I'm fully immune to it now, <laughs> but let me see here. I'm going to bring them up. I mean, you will not believe what I look like. And it was so funny. There was a woman in my quilt group and she talked about um, her shingles that she had gotten and described it so vividly. And so I was one day I was sitting there and I noticed that I had a very painful place right on this eyebrow and all of a sudden I knew oh my gosh I've got shingles I went to the doctor before there was any visible sign aha I do have one picture it's not the worst case but probably good not to show you the very worst one but let's see oh come on come on come on photo let's see but my eye closed up. It got so bad. I had a couple days of it just closing up on me. Come on. And it took me two months to feel better. And the funniest thing, if I get stressed, it'll the nerves will hurt. See, that's not even that bad. I don't know where my other photos but my eyes my eyelids swelled all up this was when I was getting better so I wish I'll have to find by Sunday I'll have to find another picture of my shingles because oh my gosh I look like I had lost the fight for sure so who be careful if you have to have a shingles um vaccination get one because my son ended up getting shingles he was young and, um, but he wore himself down so much. He got it right after his wedding a couple of years ago. And I told him, go to urgent care right now, because if you don't get to the doctor within 48 hours, you have 48 hour window when you think you might have it, or maybe it's four days, four day window, but they can give you an antiviral that will help a lot because if you don't get it treated, you could have permanent nerve damage. And I didn't want that. So you had not had chicken pox. I wonder, I wonder if you had such a light case of them that nobody knew. That's really unusual. Okay. So, oh, I was, we were going to talk about my nails. All right. This looked like it was a pretty cool color to put on. I put it on and thought, I look a little corpse-like, I have to admit. When you're pale like I am, I'm not sure this is the best color. So I put it on, but it's not going to stay. I thought, when you become a woman of a certain age, it doesn't necessarily look playful and cute. <laughs> And then I told myself, I said, okay, Deb, you can do whatever you want at any age. I'm a 
big, big believer in have fun because it's your life and you can do whatever you want. But every time I look at them, I think, oh, my gosh. Kind of makes me look like I'm having a really bad asthma attack. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so I know I was supposed to work on the newest um, art quilt, which was a favorite childhood memory. Number one. <laughs> Number one. I'm not really motivated to do it yet. I know. I, I mean, Mark tried to talk me through it. He really tried. He, I'm like, Mark, I don't know. I just can't get excited about this one. And I thought I was, but then having to go out of town, the trial and everything, it kind of burnt me out a little. And so he was like trying to pet me up going, I, I think you could do this. And I think, you know, what do you think? And tell me what you think is your favorite memory and all that. And so we came up with something. And then I still dragged my feet. And I said, you know, it's funny, but art, oh, that hurt my pneumonia shoulder. <laughs> you better watch it. I'll try to get sympathy from you ladies. But anyway, oh, gosh, use it on toenails. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, my goodness. Still work great. Good job, Dora. Good, good job. Oh, there you go, Diana. Every single color. That would be cool. And uh, so anyway, um, I, I said, well, honestly, all I want to do is work on my grandson's quilt. And I wish now I had started earlier, but I'm not going to beat myself up about it because y'all know what I was doing and how stressful it was. And we do the best we can. And we have to be gentle to ourselves. So... I do, though, want to get this quilt done because I can't be there, but my quilt can be there. And that's that would make me happy. That would make me happy. So there are 16 blocks in the quilt. So I hope you don't mind. I thought we would just chat and I'll work up on, on I'll work on little Donato's quilt. But but you see the 16 blocks and they all turn a certain way. It's really important to get the final results. Now, the good news is, and I'll, I'll get it that within the next week, I'll have it put on the site. Okay, I had this red fabric. And it is so cute. Looks like a little cartoon. And I had planned, I thought I had the right number cut out. I didn't. I was missing quite a few. And I had taken all the leftover red fabric and cut it to two and a half inch strips because I wanted to use it for the binding. Well, then I realized I was going to be short. So a Sunday, some of you who were here Sunday will remember, I was talking about a way to take the, the red strip and you put a white strip on either side because it's supposed to turn out to be a red and white pinwheel. Okay. I forgot to tell you on Sunday, you have to put a white strip on each side because what I needed to do is I still want to use the fabric for the binding. So I wanted to be as careful as I can. I needed to use three of these strips. I might end up two strips short and then I'll just pick a corresponding color that I have left over. So, and that, you know, that, that's all well and good. But anyway, I taped, I made a video of how, I made half square triangles out of a two and a half inch strip. Because if you think about it, with jelly rolls being so popular now, that way you don't have to worry about coming up with a six or seven inch piece to make like eight of them. It's always preferable, preferable to make eight at a <coughs> Pardon me. <laughs> I had to reach for the tissue quick. But... Um, it's always preferable to make eight half square triangles at a time. But what happens if all you have are two and a half inch strips? So I show you how to do it. And let me, let me show you something. The only waste I had was this much, this much, 
and I did have some waste. I, I had triangles of the white, but I was so tickled. I had plenty of white. It was that red that I wanted to be really careful with. So I will have that video edited. That way, if you're if you're making, you want to make use a jelly roll to make something, and it has pinwheels or half square triangles. No problem. I'll show you how to make them with just the two and a half inch strip. Because what I did not want to do was to cut triangles. You always have a side on the bias. And you ladies know that bias is a big no-no. If you can avoid bias, do it. I was watching Alex Anderson the other day. She's doing a great job Mondays and Fridays or Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Doing a great job. She's Now they're doing a quilt along. And she was very careful to show how to iron pieces if there's a biased edge. It's free. It's on YouTube. It's the quilt show, Alex Anderson. And I highly recommend it. Because she really shows, she not only shows you how to try to, to create a more perfect piece block, but she shows you what to do if you've messed it up. I'll give you a good tip right now. Not all of my things come out even. You see that? So, and in, in this case, I wanted the center to match more than the outside edge. But let's say you're coming up a little short. She should try to make the outside edges even and cheat a little bit on the seam allowance. I said, that's brilliant because if the outside edges are even, then that mistake won't keep multiplying. Sometimes if, if the outside edge is too short, you don't realize you put it in, you forget about that it's a short side. Now, what I do... If I have a short side, I had one here somewhere, I will draw a little line. Like let's say, let's say I've measured this and this is truly short, then where the seam allowance is, I will draw a little arrow showing why it's short, what part do you, whoops, do you see that little arrow I did right there, right in the seam allowance. I would draw a little arrow to remind myself when I sew this to something else, I'll show you. Let's say I'm going to sew it to this. So I'll remind myself that this is too short. So I'll line it up with this piece over here and see how I've left it short. And what I'll do in that case is I try to at least have an eighth of an inch I shorten my stitch length to 1.8 or 1.9 because you know that if you're, you don't have enough of a seam allowance, it'll pull the threads apart more easily. So shorten your seam allowance. Then once you've sewn that, the shortness of it no longer matters because it's fully encased in a seam and your outside edge is now back where it should be. So, but do watch Alex Anderson. She is amazing, and she was showing a color tool. Now it's another thing I need to get because it was the most amazing color tool, and it was she was showing how she was doing tertiary colors and how you can pick an intensity that's the same on these three opposite colors. So, and they have it at her, her shop. But anyway, um. I'm trying to think of how I got into all of that. Another thing I do, and I'll bring the camera down, but let me just kind of blow my nose a second. That sneeze made my nose run. Oh, hold on. Yes, I could do that, Diane 57. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. Oh, Diana Wright already knew how to do it out of script, you smart thing. Okay. Now, I wanted to show you one thing you'll notice, and I when I'm go when I know I'm going to trim my seam allowances, I shorten the stitch length. See, that's a shorter stitch. But here is the the most recent seam allowance. I'm going to show you what I do when I have all of these seam allowances come together. Now, this is just my thing. You don't have to do it this way, 
but I go ahead and cut it an angle down to an eighth of an inch so I can reduce some of the bulk. And then in here, the best thing would be to do is to grade the seams, which means you make this one shorter than this one so that instead of it just stopping in a blob, it, it kind of tapers down. That's what I do when I make clothing, but I'm in too big of a hurry. So what I do then is just come in here and cut this down to an eighth of an inch. That prevents you from having a big knot, a lump right there in the middle. So this is how, and you notice I kind of went around because all of these will be sewn. And this way I'm just getting rid of some of that bulk. I have noticed that my machine down here, my Elna, does not like when it runs over a bump. So now... I am going to take and sew this to this, okay? What I'm going to do first is I line up my seams, but I'm going to come in here before I sew it, and I'm going to grade that. And now when I sew it, it's got a lot less bulk. And this will also help me when I am quilting it to keep from having a, a bump for it to go over. And then... I've shown you before, but I'll show you again. How do we perfectly match? And this is something I learned from um, this is something I learned from Alex Anderson. So what she does is about a quarter of an inch stick it right through the sewing line. So it comes right out at a quarter of an inch right on that seam. Then take and put it in here. And here, right at a quarter of an inch, right in that seam, right where the sewing is. Okay, then you pull these together, and you have this the pen sticking perpendicular to the fabric. Okay, and it's important that it stays. You don't want it like this. You don't want it like that. You want it perfectly perpendicular. Okay, now... Then you take and use your fine, fine pens to do this. Then you take a pen and you put it in right to this side. And you see where I run it through two times? Because that way there's no pivoting of it. It's secured twice. Okay, and make sure that this is perpendicular. Okay, then get another pen. And don't go over here. Put it right here near the seam line. And while this is perpendicular, push this one through, and I do it twice. Okay? And then make sure that your seam allowance is perfectly lined up. Make sure this that your pen is still perpendicular. Now let's sew this and see how we did. Because the truth is in the pudding. So now I can pull out that perpendicular pen. Leave these, leave both of these in until the last minute. Okay. All right. I'm, I think I'm running out of, hold on. I think I've got to put a new bobbin in. I'm running out of thread. Hold on. Yeah. I could feel it pull up. So let me pop in the new bob real quickly. But I thought tonight we would just kind of talk about whatever comes up. And I, if you didn't mind, I'm going to work on this baby's quilt so I can hurry up and get it off to them. Okay. So now, here we are. Put it right back. Now, I hope if I'm not exactly perfect, it's, you know, I hate having to pull that off and put it back on. Okay. Pull out. Get right up to this pin. Pull this pin out. Get right up to the next pin. Pull that pin out. And sew down the rest of the way, holding the fabric good. Don't let it twist off. 
Hold it firmly. All right, let's see how we did. Are you ready? So how perfect do you think that is? Hello, Michelle the Quilter. Is that pretty amazing? I don't think you can get more perfect than that. You also know the little trick, too, about if it's not quite matching perfectly, you can turn the seam allowance this way to see if it looks better, or you can turn, turn the seam allowance to the other side to see if it looks better. But now I've just shown you how to make a perfect intersection, and you have to use the three pins. That's the three-pin method, and it's the best way I know to get a perfect seam. All right, so that's when it really counts, because trust me, yes, does it take time to do the three-needle thing? But how much time does it take to rip out a seam and do it again? Okay, it takes time. So I'm just so tickled with that. I was hoping it would come out good. Well, that's pretty darn good. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so anyway, now you know, that's how I make it easy. Now, since I'm in this mood of not wanting bulky seams, let me show you. When, when I push this down, wherever, I would probably push it this way. This has more pieces in it, and it's just already stressed. So I would push it from the side that has four pieces to the side that has two. But this is the perfect way if you're really going to grade your seams. Come in here. This is going to be the underside. Come in here and trim that down to a scant eighth of an inch. Then when you bring this over and you press it, it, it keeps it that little bit from catching on anything. And now, oh yes, Deborah, ask ask about. I will ask answer any questions you have. W tell me what questions you have. But do you see how much flatter that lays now? So it just can make it easier. Especially, whoops, let me pull it out. Especially if you're doing hand quilting, grade those seams if you possibly can. Do you thread paint before you sandwich? Absolutely. Do you stabilize it? Absolutely. What I do is I use a fusible interfacing, like if you were going to make a collar for an outfit, I use fusible interfacing, iron it onto the back, and then you do your thread painting before you put it all together. Now, I've done a quilt the other way, a space quilt, but it really makes the back look kind of yucky. And remember this. To make a quilt be an official quilt, you have to have three layers. So um, I like to do my thread painting just on the, on the top with the stabilizer. Then I put the batting and the backing, and then I do the quilting. And um, it gives it more depth. It looks nice and neat. You don't have all these weird um, threads hanging everywhere. So good, good question, Miss Deborah. So you can use a Pellon interfacing. You know how if you've ever made clothing to put, now I, for, I just remember, I knew what this was. This is a, um, <laughs> come on, Diana, right? But like to, you line a collar or cuffs or, I know what this is. It just went boop out of my mind. So, anyway, but that interfacing, you iron it on the back, and it'll keep it. Oh, thank you, Miss Marsha. I'm so excited about that baby coming. I just wish I could be there to hold it. When Russell was born, I went up, and I gave them um, one or two nights sleep. Said, go sleep. I'll take care of the baby. I'll bring him to you only when he needs to nurse, and that way both of you can get some much-needed sleep. Because I had read that if a woman gets a full night's sleep in the first 10 days, she's less likely to have um, hormonal baby blues, that kind of thing. So I wish I could be there to do it for him again. I really do. And this time I would tell her, let me give the baby a bottle. You just sleep. 
So it's really important. Placket, yeah, plackets. And is there another name for this where you put the buttons and where it's thicker? Because you always put interfacing in that. So, but you know what? I, you, thank you. Thank you for placket. Because definitely, definitely. So anyway, all right. So now I've shown you how to do a perfect seam. I've shown you how to grade the seams to keep there from being big lumps and bumps. And I love these Fiskars. And this is not a Fisker. This is a West Cut that I got from that tool place, Tooltron. Um, and they work really well. But I love these. And I have arthritis. And if I only have to do something one way, then that's wonderful. And I have big hands. I mean, look at these hands, girlfriend. So I don't. I love not having to put them in little scissor holes. So these are my go-to when I'm sewing. And then I have the Fiskars shears for when I'm doing bigger cuts, cutting out fabrics, cutting out patterns, whatever. And I love these because the same thing. You do have to put your fingers in a hole, but you only push, you only have to create one of the motions. The other one's done by spring. So anyway, those are my little things. Any, I love answering questions. Facings. Yes, yes. Let me hold on just one second. Um, what part of the shirt the buttons Huh. Well. Hmm. I know it's got a certain name and I'm just not able to get the right Let me see. Oh, there's a site that says parts of a shirt. Let me see what that is. So, and you know that men's and women's shirts button the opposite way. I don't know. Mark, so I asked him about it, and he said, well, women back in the day got, um, well, no, it's called a placket. So, who was that that said that? On this thing? On this right here, it's called a placket. So I, I, it's good enough for me. I love it. Okay. And yoke and all that. So who was that that said placket? I think it was Cheryl and Cheryl Hogan. I think it was our Cheryl Hogan. Was it? So anyway. And facing is the fabric that shows on the inside. You usually sew them together and one flips to the inside and that's your facing. So I used to used to work at a museum and make clothing that went back to there. Of course it was you because that's right. You are a custom dressmaker. I worked at St. Mary City Museum in Maryland for eight years and um, made historic clothing. And I don't call it costumes because they had to actually work in the fields and cook in the huge walk-in fireplace and scrub dishes out of a bucket. So I called it clothing because it had to really work. But anyway, I'll have to find you some pictures of that. All right. So let me show you what I'm doing now. And if you have any questions, oh, wouldn't it be nice to have spring pinking shears? How far away are they? Oh, that's the problem. They're a good seven hours away, so I would have to stay somewhere. And quarantining is not possible. I mean, I, I just, it, it just kills me. And if anything happened and on the way I were to pick up the virus, because you have to, like when we went to Maryland, um, I had to go. I was forced to go to that one. But you've got to be careful if you stop for gas. You stop to get something. We didn't stop at any restroom because we felt like that was too big of a risk. So we just found a, 
a wooded area, grassy area off the side of the road. And uh, so, I don't know. We'll figure out what we can do. But I haven't seen Russell since Christmas. He's 16 months, and I, he'll have no idea who I am. But I'll just, I'll just ease back in slowly. And, um, you know, we, once in a while, we try to do a Skype-type talk. But he's not real interested in looking at the, at the screen. So we'll see what we can do. All right. Well, let me show you what I've got. I've decided to take these cute, cute border. I took the border print and cut it into strips. And to match the blocks, they have to be four and a half inches. So this is how I cut them. So these are going to go as sashing. They're going to go in between all the blocks. So I had to cut them different lengths because of the pinwheels having to be in there. Now I've got, as you can see, I've got 11 blocks made up there of the 16. And I've got these five left. So I pieced all the components so I could do chain piecing because I'm in a big, big hurry. So, okay, let me turn this over here and then I will show you. And if you have any questions, but um, it's nice just to be able to see y'all and talk to you. And so now what I'm going to do is I don't need all these pieces. I am done with this. So now I'm going to bring over my three strips and oops, let me back this up here. All right. So, oops, let me get this other one. This was showing me how to take, you make all your pinwheels and then it shows you to take a pinwheel and a three block set and put it on a background rectangle so see how that lays and then a two-piece like this a two-piece set at the end then for the middle row you take so you make two of those exact they look exactly like this two of them meaning that that white fabric faces up then you take and you i put together a piece let me show you I put together a piece like this, and I did it on a rectangle of white, then the pinwheel, then the rectangle of white, and then the other two pieces together. And I then had to make that one. That way the pinwheel's in the middle. So that's what I've gotten done. So here is, let me back this up a little. Here is my first row piece, which is the pinwheel, a three-piece next to a white rec background rectangle with the white fabric facing in, and then here a little two pieces at the bottom. And I fussy cut these because I wanted a few of these in the blocks too. Then here is my middle row with the two-piece white to the middle, the pinwheel, white, and then another two pieces. And instead of cutting up all these blocks, I made strip sets and then cut the strip sets apart. And here is the same configuration as this. But what I'm going to do to make the block is turn this around. Now when I put these three together, let me get up here a little. Let me see if you can, I don't know if you can, oops, the computer's in the way. But now you have pinwheel, this corner, middle, and that corner. So they go right across the diagonal. So now what I'm going to do, as I said, I did them all with chain piecing. I did the components first. This component, the three-piece component with the white rectangle. I did all of those things first. Then put these together. Now I'll take the different rows and put them together. So as I'm getting ready to do this, I'll show you where do I pin it. Now, Deb hates pinning. She's not a pinner, a natural pinner. But I hate pinning, but I will pin for this. Now, sadly, 
I couldn't make these seams interlock because I didn't want to take a chance of that showing through the white. And see, oops, this one I didn't trim yet. Let me just do a light little trim here so I don't have... Because if I don't trim, then you've got a lot of extra pieces of fabric, okay? And here's one that I'm going to give a little trim to. All right. Now, a lot of times, what I'll do is I'll sew the components together, go sit down, and trim them while I'm watching TV. So, but just get those intersections trimmed a little bit. Now, don't you have to you have to shorten your stitch length to be able to do this because you don't want to weaken those joints. So I bring this together. Unfortunately. They can't nestle. They're both the seam allowances are having to go the same direction. So I'm just going to take and use a fine pin because that'll keep it from squidging the fabric out of. That'll that'll make it easier to keep the fabric right in line. Now here, yep, that's another seam that's got to join, and this one I've got to kind of pull to make it work. And then I get this up here. And put a pin right there. Now, if I was really worried, I would do the three-pin method. But I've been making so many of these. Maybe I'm just getting tired of the three-pin method. But, all right. Here we go. One last pin. I'm only pinning where two seam lines come together. Oops, let me get this. It's easier to trim these down before you sew it, okay? And here's an intersection where all four pieces come together. Now, I know you can do that little twirl thing, but honestly, ladies, I have seen uh, six people do it, and I can't ever understand what they're doing. My brain does not function that way. So now here, let me go sew this together. All right. And I, you see I've got a, uh, a leader here to make it a little easier so that I don't lose the thread into the machine or pull the fabric down into the machine. So I've sewn on it and I'm just kind of pulling. Okay. Get this to go nice and smoothly. Oh, good. It is pinned. Okay. Now I normally like I normally like to do chain piecing, but this is a place I'm probably not going to be able to chain piece, and let me tell you why. Well, I guess I could still do it, but the thing is, all of these rows are slightly different. All of these rows are slightly different. Well, it would be nice to have an Accu, um, an Accu quilter, but you know what? With me b being more of an art quilter, I don't really do traditional quilts all that much. So I thought, well, I'll save my money for thread for thread painting. But oops, okay, I there is a place I should have done. The okay, this one matched up pretty good. That's pretty good. This one, I'm not that happy with it. And this one, I'm not as happy with it. Although, with the way that is white. Let me see. That's what you have to do. Now, yep. okay. So, I, I was not in the mood, but I've got to remember I'm talking to y'all and I'm not paying full attention. So, I'm going to take this out and do the three pen method. And let's see how good that works. Be careful when you seam rip like I'm doing because you can so easily cut the fabric. The best method is to take and break every third or fourth thread. And then when you come through, it just pops the remaining one and boop, comes right out. So I have a dear friend that taught me that. Jan. So, oops, I did the wrong place anyway. Okay, so here is where I want to take the thread out. 
So I'll show you that. You just do every third or fourth thread. Take them out. And see, I'm so impatient. So normally I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this. But then when I rip the fabric, I wish I'd have done it. So now what I do is come back in here. Let me take out another one a little bit further this way. Okay, so now when I put the seam ripper in between those two layers of fabric, it just pops them so easy. And that way you're less likely to rip your fabric. All right, so now I'm going to do the three-pin method. So I've got to open up enough, enough seam. I'm going to go ahead and open this one to the end so that I can get a nice, smooth, a nice, smooth junction. So I'm going to come here, and I'm going to stick it at a quarter of an inch right in that seam. And then I'm going to come put it right here at a quarter of an inch, stick it right in that seam. Then I let these, I need to take out a couple more stitches this way. I can feel already that I have too much fabric to work in. Okay, and I'm going to show you another hint. This will be tip night. Okay, so see, so we line it up perpendicular. Line it up perpendicular so that that pin is perfectly up and down, not twisted either way. I'm going to hold it firmly, get another very thin pin, and put it in right here. And I like to do it twice, up, down, up, down. Then I'll get another thin pin over here, making sure it's still perpendicular. And let's... Oh, I'm going to... And see, that stopped a little too short. So I'm going to actually go through one more time because you really have to keep that fabric in place. So look how close I put the needles. I mean, the pins. So now I pull this one out. Okay. And let's try this again and see how we do. Okay. Now, another thing to tell you. Do you see that one side of this, this top, this top side here, has extra fabric in it? If that's the case, you put the extra fabric on the bottom. Let your feed dogs do the work with you. Okay, so you ready? Normally, I wouldn't sew it from the outside in. But since I have this extra fabric here, I feel like I need to do that. All right, so here we go. Now, let's see how good we do this, even though we're going from technically the wrong way. But what you do is you put that extra fabric down bottom. You put that fabric, extra fabric down bottom to let the feed dogs help bring the fabric in. And what I do, depending on how much extra fabric's on the bottom, I'll lift it up like this. And it's like going around the corner so watch how it eases it in. You have heard of easing in the fabric. Okay. Go right up to the pin. Pull it out. Go right up to the next pin. And I don't pull on the fabric. I don't try to stretch it or anything because I don't want to do anything to mar it up. But now I have this extra fabric underneath here. So now that I'm past that intersection, I'm going to lift it up and let it gently ease in the extra. All right. So now let's see if the three-pin method conquered what was a messy, off-centered off seam allowance. Okay. Are we ready? There it is. It's this one right here. And you know what? That is good enough. That is very good. So, there we go. So, it worked. Now, I'll go back to this one and let me straighten this one up. And now, since y'all are watching, I have to be good. I can't do my my tacky little ways where I take risk with tearing my fabric. So now that you're watching, I'll do it the right way. <laughs> but remember to take out 
enough to, so that you can move it over and ease it in. All right, and let me remember which way, which side needed to go what way. Okay, so that this top has to go that way. All right, so that'll help me when I'm pinning the seams together. Okay, now I've done. I picked every third one or so. Now I'm just cutting the little one that's left. And you can also like open it up like this. And that way you can just get that little one, then pull. See, they almost come right out for you. So thank you, Jan, for teaching me that. So now I'm going to line this up really good, really, really good, and hold it firmly. This time I'm not going to do my up and down pin. I'm just going to hold it firmly and put one on either side. Lee, I'll do my two pin method this time. Okay. So now, whoops, let me put my two pins in. Let's see if taking that shortcut was worth it or not. I got a baby that's going to be born. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go ahead and start back from the end because I was a little bit messy on that seam allowance. I'm going to hold it up to work in some of the extra. Then I'm going to lay it back down so I can go across the pinned area. Pull one pin out, do a little bit more, Oops, stop, pull the next pin out. All right, now let's see how this turned out. <coughs> Pardon me, I don't, <coughs> ah, sneezing. Okay. Uh. It's pretty darn close. I think for a baby quilt, that's going to be close enough. But this would have been better had I done the whole three pins. Now, let me see if it's going to help it by which way I turn. Yes. If I turn the seam allowance this way, it does look better. So, I'm going to turn the seam allowance. So, I take it over here. The ironing boards. I'm going to turn the seam allowance the opposite way, and it looks a lot better that way. Okay. And don't forget, another really helpful tool to do accurate piecing is to starch your fabric. Whoops. Okay. I should have gotten Mark to tighten up. Okay. All right. So it just shows, especially if I'm talking, take the time to pin it correctly. And then I can come in and grade this seam down where all four pieces meet if I think it would help me with the quilting. All right, and the main thing is I want it to lay nice and flat. That's the most important thing. All right, I'm going to put the other piece on. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. You've got a lot of smart people here, and if I can't answer it, I know a lot of us can. Any other question that I might have missed? Oh, thank you, Marsha. If I can make sewing easy on any of you, then that makes me happy. Okay, now I was looking at these pieces. The one thing I'm noticing when I put this together is I see a lot of the green, turquoise light blue. It, it doesn't have enough pop. It only has one piece of yellow up here and one stripe down here. So I'm not going to use this one. Now, let's see. This one is better, but there's a problem. I don't want this red block against this one. 
This is why I don't do these. I'm going to take my time and make sure that I've got, you know what? This is this red block is going to make it difficult for every one of them. I, this is the problem because I'm always going to have a pinwheel here. I'm going to have to take this back out and put a different color. Yeah, because that kind of messes up the pen pinwheel look. All right, so this one I'm going to, so I won't forget what the problem is. I'm going to put a pin here to remind me that I need to take out this red one. I wish I had turned this over. So maybe I'll, t you know what, I'll do it right now. I'll do it right now. What I'm going to do is open up this seam right here. But this is where it gets tricky when you do a scrappy quilt because, you know, you, you, you kind of want to be relaxed and playful, but you can't... <sighs> Yeah, I do certain things, certain fabrics I don't like next to each other. And especially if it interferes, it takes away from the design. All right, so I'm going to leave this there so I can remember to turn that over. But now let me carefully. You won't believe this. One time I was watching Eleanor Burns sew. She takes out her seam allowances, her her wrong seams with her uh, rotary cutter. I thought that was very brave. But if you're Eleanor Burns, you can do it any way you want. That woman has earned her stripes. Okay. So what I'm going to do with this, because now I realize I cannot have a red right at the place where I get ready. Actually, Wow, yeah. So I wouldn't have been I wouldn't have been able to have a red up here up here either. So okay. Some of y'all have said you you like doing scrappy quilts. They overwhelm me. <laughs> I'd much rather do a landscape. <laughs> All right. So real quickly, because we're gonna say goodbye in about ten minutes, so or less. But if you have any questions, anybody? Hi, Sarah. Hi, sweetheart. It's so good to see you. All right, so now this is going to go this way. So what I'm going to do is sew it along the long edge first. So I'm going to sew it right here. And all right. I don't. This is just a straight piece, so I don't have to match up any seam allowances. No seams have to be matched. Okay. Okay. Quickly run right up to here. All right, let me do a quick little iron or pressing. Although you should see me, sometimes I get carried away. Sometimes I'm really ironing it. Okay, do, let me touch up this little one just a touch. All right, now I'm going to take and put these two together. Right. There we go. All right, let's see how this looks. That is definitely good enough. Okay, so now I'm going to lay this back down. I like showing you what to do if this doesn't work, what to do if that doesn't work. Okay, now I can go back and see 
where I want. This bothers, okay, whoops. This bothers me up here, having those two greens so close together. So, let me, oh, no, the green's still too close together. Aha. This one's much better. I like it. This is all good. This is good. This is not too close to this one. I got a nice bright yellow, and I've got two stripes. So I'll put this together. Ah, isn't she an inspiration? Single mom for and made herself into such a success. But she's she's to get she has her special wonderful man and she's happy and that's all good and now I need to trim this seam right here. Oops, and this one too. All right, these are all trimmed. So now I've got to match this. I got to match these seams. I don't want to keep y'all waiting too long, so I'm going to try very hard to do it right. Okay. Then i got to match these seams. I knew that I wanted to do a pinwheel for new little Donnie, but because pinwheels to me are so happy. But I didn't pay attention to this, that this one had... 16 plus 3 times 16, like, you know, almost 100 pinwheels. So that's a lot. But it's a happy little quilt. Okay. Hopefully, I've pinned these good enough, but at least I can show you. I only have five blocks left to make. All right. Let's see how how I did. Take my pins out. Let's see. I think that looks pretty, pretty. Yes, that looks pretty good. Pretty good. I like it. And I can tell... Right here, it might cut a little bit of the point off, but you know what? I don't think anybody would notice that. So I'll come over here. Whoops. Let me, sorry if I'm making you a little nauseous, but I will come over here, press this, and then we're good. All right. So now this is the 12th block. I have four left to go. And hopefully Sunday, I would love to think I've got this off the frame, if I can finish it, to the piecing tomorrow. Because after this, I just do sashing and borders. And I will be adding, um, so let's see. I think that's cute. All right, it worked. So now, whoops, hold on a second. Sorry about this, guys. All right. So now I can place this one right here. That might be a good place. But this is one I have to use a design wall, too, to make sure I've got the places all working correctly. Okay, so, all right, so it's coming along, and like I said, I'm going to put sashing in between everything, and you see I've got another whole stack of pinwheels, because there are going to be pinwheels in the corners, and pinwheels in between the sashing. So, 
This this is called Dancing Pinwheels by Lee Ann Brumette. And I think this was a free pattern. Share on social media using hashtag Dancing Pinwheels. So thank you so much. If you go to Podunk Pretties, Lee Ann Brunette, you can get this pattern. Here it is. Whoops, let me see. There it is. If you go there, you can find it free. I can't make you copies and send to you, but you can go to that website and get it. So what a cute, I think my grandson's going to love this. And it's very happy and very pretty. And I just love the sashing. I mean, how cute is this? So very, very, very cute. And I meant to show you. Yeah, here we go. I had this yard and I didn't end up using it. So it'll go on the back. And, or I'll make them a little pillowcase for it. That might be nice. And here is the stripe that I'm going to use then for the outside border. And I was hoping to use the red to use the binding. So you will be able to see what I've gotten done as of Sunday. But maybe this would make a nice little pillowcase. And I have some strips left that I could use as a little decorative piping on the pillowcase. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone. And thank you for not minding too badly that I didn't work on an art quilt tonight. But sometimes we just have a deadline that's just too important for your heart. And you just have to do it. So especially now that I won't be able to see him until he's at least a few months old. So, um, but hopefully... They're the only two that will be in delivery. And are you ready for this? Any of you ladies who've had babies? She has to wear a mask the entire labor. Not going to be pleasant. But what can you do? Well, thank you so much, Laura Rylander. Hello. Nice to see you, everybody. Nice to see you. And it was very nice to see... Um, who was our other new person? Michelle with two, with two L's. So come back next Thursday night and I'll be back to working on our landscape and art quilts. Now my Sunday shows, we do whatever makes us have fun. This Sunday, we're going to actually make a journal. We're going to decorate it, decorate the fabric, show you how to glue it onto a a little diary type book and to put a closure on it and put bling because you know I got to have my bling. So we will be doing a journal start to finish this Sunday. All right, guys. Thank you for joining me. And next week we'll get back to our art and landscape series. All right. Take good care, everybody. Stay well. Do something special for yourself. All right. Bye-bye. Have a good weekend. And Diana Wright, have a good time in that big, beautiful pool. Yay. If anybody deserved it, it's y'all. So that's wonderful. Take care. Sarah, it was so good that you popped in. It's so nice to see you. Take care, all of you. Laura, I hope you'll come back and see us. We're here Sunday afternoon. It's 3, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, New York time. So we'll see you all. Take care. So good seeing you. Bye-bye. And Cheryl, thank you, girl. I'm going to get you back. That was so sweet. Sue Smith, hello, darling. And June, it was so good seeing you again. Ah, thank you. Come back and see us again. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. See you Sunday. Bye-bye, guys.